um, Slav Tomkin Baraza, who is a boarding master at uh, the Alliance School, and uh, Amos Kaburu, senior pro programs officer at uh, Uwezo Kenya. A lot of issues to deal with performance had been raised. Um, just before we went on break, Tom Kenya was asking you about uh, the increase in performance for 13 subjects. But let's discuss the fact that there's been a reduction in the number of students to enroll into university. Uh, the university grade to uh, attaining university entry grade is C+. Um, last year, there was 88,929 students who attained uh, the C+, university grade. Education CS Fred Matiangi says this year have a lower number. What would you attribute that to? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Michelle. Um, in my training as a researcher, I'll be a little bit skeptical in terms of speculating, but it's indeed worrying that uh, the number of uh, children scoring a C plus and above has declined. Mm -hmm. But what will attribute likely to this is that um, we need to look at the question of what is happening in our schools. Are our children learning? what are the learning outcomes in our schools. Mm -hmm. Because if you use this measure of the summative evaluation, which are examinations that are coming at the end of a cycle, it is becoming evidently clear that our children do not demonstrate uh, superior uh, skills in terms, of, in terms of mastery of the required competences, mm -hmm. as is actually seen across, across the board. Actually, these results come with a lot of inconsistencies, because here we are having a situation whereby 13 subjects have gone up, then does it mean that the other subjects have gone lower, we also need to look at something around analyzing the behaviors of the children in terms of their intelligence abilities, in terms of KCP being a predictor. We also need also to understand the context in which these uh, examinations were undertook. These were some of the examinations that uh, were highly unlikely. At one point, even we had political leaders saying that if children don't sit for exams, they won't die. There was a lot of anxiety whether national examinations were going to be there or not. So I think there is a lot of things that need to to be understood in the context of the results that we are seeing mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Tom Kidd, with the number of candidates we had, see more than 615,000, yeah. it then means we have a bigger margin of candidates who will not um, attain the university grade. Last year, we had mm -hmm. teachers' unions, Nat and Kupet, complained, saying, could it be that the exam was so hard mm -hmm. that out of more than half a million candidates, you only have a handful of A's, only 140 A's this year, only 142 A's. Um, many are still saying it may be an issue with the grading system or is it that the exams are too hard? Could it be Amos's questions? Are our students not learning in these schools? I think some of the reasons that are uh, making these students not perform well may be the lack of seriousness. And uh, when you compare this year's exams, with the past exams. You remember like 20, 2016, 2015, there was uh, a lot of uh, copy pasting mm -hmm. of questions from the previous exams. Right. But when you ask students who did this year's exams, we are told that uh, most of the questions were original. Mm -hmm. A student can revise all the questions uh, fr from 1989 up to 2016, then he only gets one question of two marks, which is repeated, right. unlike the previous years, whereby we had so many questions which are then mm -hmm. repeated. All right. Maybe yeah. just, just a rider to that. Mm. I think this is the highest time we need to allow experts to do one thing, and that is to measure the quality of the examinations that we have. Mm. And I want to speak as an assessment specialist, that there is something good everything to do with the quality of an examination. Mm. And that's why even we have got what we call whatever method you use, including the item response theory, that you will even set what we call an examination difficulty level. Mm. That it doesn't matter even if you are the best of the best, you can only score a particular mark. Mm -hmm. And when you look at uh, the way even questions are framed, it will end up giving you particular results. I want to mention one thing. Uh, working in an institution that does a lot of assessments, mm -hmm. we have got the leeway to look at the quality of an examination by passing them through processes such as pilots and pretests. Right. However, national examinations cannot be piloted because mm -hmm. you don't have a group that you can go to test on the test to see the quality of that examination before you can go to give it out because the national examinations are supposed to be done by everyone who is actually qualified to do them. And so in the process, you are likely to miss out some of these things. And I'll actually give an example. Mm. You, could have a, you could be asking children a question that requires just to be answered in a particular way. Mm -hmm. So it 
comes out that the performance of the children is affected by the way the question was asked yes. and not necessarily the content. Mm -hmm. Because maybe you are asking the question that discuss the causes of the Majimaji rev revolution. But then the children end up to give you explaining the causes. So the concept of explaining is different from the concept of discussion. Mm -hmm. So here children will still be able to articulate the content of Majimaji rebellion in history, but they are not discussing, they are explaining. So you realize that this performance could be being caused by just changing the domain from explain to discuss. Right. So these are some of the issues that national, I mean, that uh, examinations are being done large scale like these ones mm -hmm. are supposed to be subjected to. And I'm afraid that if we are not very critical in terms of addressing these issues, mm -hmm. we will end up making some inconclusive remarks about our children, mm -hmm. whereas we are not critically able to tell what they are able to do and what they are not able to do. Right. Right. And also with the, the poor performance uh, which has been experienced this year, I think the Kenya National Examination comes under the Ministry of Education should come up with um, a minimum entry to the university, mm -hmm. like uh, the private university. You know we are killing the private universities. Right. If all students are being admitted to public universities with a C plus and above, and the lowest entry for any student to go to the universities are C plus, how will these universities operate? Mm -hmm. I think they, they, they should lower low the the, uh, the entry grade the to, to university. Well, it is something universities. we'll be discussing yeah. um, once again in just a moment. But exam practice is something that has also been mentioned uh, by Fred Matiangi mm. in his speech there. He says 40 teachers, including principals, in this year's examinations are facing disciplinary action uh, of uh, irregularities in the exams. And uh, the National Exam Council was very strict mm. uh, in the manner in which uh, this exam would be uh, would be conducted. We had President Uru Kenyatta now call out to the uh, DPP to fast track the more than 700 cases um, coming in from last year of mm. exam irregularities. How, in your view, Amos, has this matter been handled? Because 700 from last year are yet to be prosecuted, 40 yeah, from yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah. What, first of all, would push a teacher, a principal nonetheless, to engage in exam irregularities? Uh, thank you, Michelle. Mm. I'll put across one thing. I have done more than 60 media interviews this year on educational issues, uh -huh. and I have never prepared for any media interview. For the reason being, I'm quite comfortable mm. handling the subject at hand. Right. If you call me to discuss about education financing, I'll talk about it. If you call mm. me to talk about assessments, I'll talk about it because that is my field. It is very worrying when teachers, when you hear teachers begin to tell you that we had prepared students adequately. Mm -hmm. What is this that they are preparing for? <laughs> what it tells you is that examinations are high stake. Mm -hmm. And when examinations are high stake, it means that interest goes so high. And so in the process, people are forced to do anything possible for them to be able to get a better grade. Mm -hmm. So the, what we are seeing right now is just a demonstration of the desperate attempt to acquire the few spaces. Because if you are going to tell us that now only 60,000 students are going to qualify to get opportunities in the <laughs> university, then it means that there is a lot of competition. So we have now to rethink the question of what is the role of national examination. Mm -hmm. Is it really using the 31 examinations as sufficient reason for us to place you to go to the university to do medicine or maybe to do journalism? Mm -hmm. Or are there different models that we use for us to place students in the university. Right. And actually, I said by giving a way forward. Universities should not use KCSC results to admit students. Mm. Rather, what universities are supposed to do is what they do even in the US. Yeah. You apply to a particular university and say, I want to do medicine. Mm. I could have got a C plus. Then universities will give you a series of examinations, right. which right. are called the entry examinations. Right. But the problem we have in this country is that we, we, we link the KCSC results to university entrance. So you are told that if you got an A in case is E, then you are forced to go and do medicine. Maybe you don't have the required attitude. You've got a C plus, you are told that the only course you can go to do is, is maybe to do education and psych. So we need to delink these two processes. And I think that starting from where we are, we could likely move towards that. But the question of irregularities in examinations as well, it speaks to the whole mm -hmm. rot and lack of integrity in this country. And of course, Education CS Fred Matiangi has tried to do so much um, in terms of exam irregularities. We'll be discussing whether that is working, but on mm. your screens now, uh, live pictures there from the Pangani Girls High School as well as the Alliance Girls School in Nairobi. Celebrations there ensuing. Um, remember, it, it does take quite a short time to access results from the SMS line triple two double five, and uh, we're seeing parents there from uh, Pangani Girls High School, which has been noted uh, by Education 
qualifications. He has Fred Matiang as being the most improved in this year's exams. We also have the Alliance Girls School there, uh, which has also produced quite a number of candidates in the top 20. Uh, the Ministry of Education there saying quite a good day for the girl child uh, with the girls once again dominating the top 20 slots. Last year we had 16 girls out of the top 20 slots. We are still receiving the names as they come in there. Uh, but uh, education experts, they're saying it is a bit too early uh, to make the conclusion that girls performed better than boys in this year's examination. Um, let me come to you. Uh, Tomkin, 10 schools uh, will not receive the results. The ministry will be holding the results from what they uh, they say is possible collusion uh, in these examinations. But before we come